Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hola. <laughs> hola. Where? Hola, hola. Hola, hola. <laughs> so right now, by the way, I am in South America. I'm not in Nigeria, okay? So we're going to be talking to Ohe, Alexandra, Alexi, but I would have the pleasure, the honor of Ohe introducing Alexandra and Alexi to us. Yeah, first, first of all, uh, Mercy, thank you so much for, for the invitation. We are very happy, anxious <laughs> uh, about this conversation. And thank you for, for the music uh, from Shakira, <laughs> uh, a Latin singer. So it, it was a very good detail. <laughs> thank you. Uh, like you said, uh, let me please introduce to Alexis and Alexandra, they are two of the ambassadors that uh, we are in South America. Alexandra, she's the ambassador from Peru. She's a psychologist, is MBA, and she has a lot of years working in visual and agile as a young facilitator. And the same with Alexis, she, she is from Chile, uh, the ambassador from Chile. He also uh, has been, I don't know, for, uh, at least 10 years working in issues related with, with Agile. He is an engineer, so I'm very happy to be with, with, with them here uh, today. And I would like, uh, if you let me, Mercy, uh, take just a minute to, to thank to the rest of the team from South America, because uh, I think that when you are working in a, uh, in a in initiative like like this festival with volunteers is so important to be grateful so i would like just to mention them that they are pedro crespo from bolivia laura galloso from venezuela carlos quiroga from colombia jimena rodriguez from argentina sandra mejia from ecuador nicole guzman from peru and Jerónimo Vargas from Argentina also. So uh, thank you so much uh, uh, to all of them also because they are a very enthusiastic uh, team and we are working to try to do our best uh, work uh, to this access to the Agile Training Reflects Festival. Thank you so much, OA, for that introduction. And I say uh, aloha to everyone within the region. This is me saying hello to you. So I'm going to start with the number one question, and I'm going to ask you, um, so how did your journey to Agile, where did it start from? Should Alexandra, I start please. Right? Yeah, Alexandra. Yeah. Okay, I can I can start. Yeah. How did I start uh, into Agile? Well, it is um, quite recent for me. Uh, I was uh, doing some visual thinking workshops because I'm a, also a Bicablo trainer. Bicablo is a company from uh, Germany. And so that's how I firstly knew about uh, Agile. And I get in love with Agile. I had a, a great, huge admiration for all the people that work in Agile communities. And so that's how I started to, to learn about the Scrum and the other different frameworks. And, but most precisely about how the, the mindset, the Agile mindset can help organizations to have a better place to work. So that's how I, I did my first steps in, in Agile. Thank you so much for sharing. That is amazing. Thank you. One of the things that I've noticed that is consistent with everybody is the fact that we all stumble onto Agile. So, Alexi, how was your journey or where did it start from? Thanks, Mercy. Um, I started in Agility when I joined to the BBA group, uh, our greatest bank. Uh, with Mundial uh, Coverture. And I work it in various areas. Um, for example, co-business analyst, co-product owner, 
the Scrum Master, and then I finally joined it in HR, how agility ambassador to teaching to others uh, and impulse the agility, the Scrum, Kanban to another areas. And then I will left BBVA and I will join in a consulting enterprise to becoming an agile coach. And actually, I, I job, my job, my principal job is agile coach in different areas and enterprise of Chile and Bolivia and other countries too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, what a journey, what a journey. Oh, hey, over to you. How did your journey start? Yeah, well, uh, my focus is more in agility, uh, in topics related with agile uh, people management and transformation processes. So my main experience is in change management, human resources, and agility. But when I was working, in, for example, in change management, and then I, I heard about agile, I, I saw and uh, I realized that there were a lot of coincidence, a lot of uh, key factors that match between those, uh, those two visions. So to me, it was very, very good to include this in, in my work, in my vision, in my approaches to work with clients. Uh, I have a own company uh, like Alexis, which is focused on transformation, uh, different kind of transformation in organizations. And I, so I am advisor in those teams and also I am trainer in lean change management and in AI people management. So that, that is my, my main experience in agility. Okay, I think we're going to do the deep dive now. And I would ask, I'm going to start, okay, I started with Alexi. So I'm going to start, no, I started with Alexandria. I'm going to start with Alexi. So what is the greatest um, success that you have seen about Agile in Chile, for instance, Alexi? How has Agile changed Chile? I mean, the practice of it. Can you share with us? Perfect. Um, Mercy, thanks. Uh, first, I want to talk uh, about the current state uh, of Chile. And uh, I am based on MIT studies of my country and my own experience in companies of financial services, telecoms, insurance, retail, energy, transport, and consultancy. And this is interesting because in Chile, it's common to observe that companies prefer to adapt the philosophies and frameworks according to their own context, instead of following a method by the book. However, at framework level, Scrum and Kanban are the favorites in this country. In most of the cases studied, uh, short-term benefits uh, are experienced that support the, option of the adoption of Agile. For example, in the financial industry, in specific, the banks lead the podium of transformation and adoptions. At the management level, um, different CEOs says that agility helps them build high performance teams with a focus on delivering high value products and services to the customer. The main benefits of Tynet are um, time to market, increase the internal efficiency and quality. And last one, in the other hierarchical levels, the main motivations are given by improvement of the work environment, increasing of trust, empowerment, and co-creating solutions. Oh, thank you so much, Alexi. Sorry, I was muted <laughs> for that brilliant insight. And oh, hey, you're gonna help me because I want some of the Spanish people followers because this video is transmitted live. And for those that are live with us on whatever channel that you're watching live, please drop a message so we can actually display your name because it's a participatory conversation. We're talking about Agile in South America. And this, I'm with the ambassador of Peru and ambassador of um, Chile. 
and the regional ambassador, Ohe. So, Ohe, let us know how has Agile helped in South America? Then I come to Alexandria. Yeah. Who goes first, me or Alexandra? Okay, let, let Alexandra, ladies first, right? Ladies first. <laughs> Alexandra, you can go. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Jorge. Well, um, the current state uh, of Agile in Peru, I, I can say that it has a, a, a long way in where we can find that uh, agi agility was developing in Peru. I can say it was from the uh, 2008, where a small group of uh, very enthusiastic uh, uh, people joined, joined it together in uh, a Starbucks coffee to start like imagining how agility can help them. And the boom was in 2013 when more and more organizations and companies wanted to have these uh, agile frameworks uh, in, in their organizations. And nowadays, uh, I can say quite the same as in Chile, um, one of the biggest benefits that we can find uh, that organizations have uh, from agility is that they can have a, a better time to market. Uh, that means a better uh, value offer to clients. So uh, this impact in how the, the user experience is and also uh, we are closing some, some digital gaps. So um, what we find here in Peru is that agility is helping organizations and also very recently from 2017 yeah. we can find also that agi agility is helping our governmental organizations like for example the health ministry or OSINARMIN which is a su super supervisory agency for investment in energy and mining and also the SUNAT, which is our national superintendency of tax administration, which is very challenging, you know, because um, go governmental organizations, uh, they have a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of documents to do, the procedures are not as easy to do, but anyway, we can find that agility is also helping them. So I can say that we have a, a good future uh, to look forward. Oh, thank you. I keep saying thank you and I'm muted. Okay, yes? Murphy, no problem. <laughs> okay. Oh, Grace is saying hello to you guys. Oh, look at the way she spells my name. I would sure. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <laughs> so over to you, Alexi, um, um, Jorge. So how has Agile, I mean, these are good stories. A group of young people came up with the concept of Agile. Organizations are beginning to adopt it. It's not peculiar. I think Africa is beginning to evolve as well. So over to you, Jorge. Well, uh, I think that the, the reality, the context in Latin America and South America is to similar uh, what described uh, Alexandra and Alexis. Uh, I want to share with, with people who is attending to this uh, interview a link where it's a research uh, from, M from MIT, uh, which is focused, uh, their scope, its scope is in Latin America. And they mentioned very interesting things in their conclusions, for example, uh, how much the reasons to adopt uh, Agile uh, in comparison with what are the benefits that organizations perceive from Agile. So uh, I, I will mention just three of each one. The reasons to adopt Agile are uh, that the leaders consider that it facilitates the uh, transformation processes, for one hand. Uh, a second reason is that uh, Agile is strengthened the customer-centric philosophy and it helps to the reduction of the time to market. 
that 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 are the main three reasons because uh, leaders adopt agile in general in Latin America. Now, when they ask what are the specific and real benefits that they achieve when they have implementing agile, they mention the improvement of time to market. So much uh, because they uh, they have more efficient processes. Uh, they mention also that it improves the focus on the client and the net promoter score. So it it, it also match with the customer centric uh, philosophy. And another very interesting aspect is related with the uh, improvement in the empowerment and sense of belonging to the collaborators in organizations. That is not uh, mentioned in the reasons to adapt, but yes, it's perceived as a benefit. And I think that is a, a very good uh, factor that we should emphasize much more when we are trying to implement and adopt Agile uh, as an organization, not just in, in one specific project. Thank you, Ohe. I'm muted. Um, thank you. Um, not sure what's going on there. Okay, so thank you very kindly for your feedback, Jorge. We really appreciate that. It means that there's progress. It means that there's hope. It means that something good is happening with regards to um, South America. So can I start with Alexi? What are the common challenges that you're facing in Peru, for instance, with regards to the adoption of the Agile mindset? Perfect. Thanks, Mercy. Um, refer to the greatest challenge. Uh, first, many companies use agility in Chile. Many, many, many. But the path of the transformation is not easy. And the greatest challenge are uh, for, in this case, intensify the mindset of experimentation at the management level and the C-level. Um, it's uh, frequently that in the another hierarchical levels, in bottom levels, um, it has more training with experimentation to achieving uh, results and the happenings of the objectives, etc. But um, we need to intensify the mindset of experimentation top down. Uh, secondly, uh, evolve the vertical leadership mindset towards horizontal leadership. Um, how you know um, the agile cells or the team cells uh, works with a servant leadership. Um, and for this reason, uh, it's, uh, Chile needs to try and more training in this term. Yeah, the third one, uh, improve the agile incentive system, evolving to fixed salary, mixed rewards for common objectives and purpose. And finally, connect the agile metrics at all organization levels, yeah? from bottom levels, medium levels, and high levels. And all of us uh, aligned with a big purpose of the enterprise. Thank you so much. So there needs to be alignment from the bottom to the top. So I'll come to you, Alexandra. What would you say are the challenges that is confronting Peru, for instance, with regards to the adoption of the agile mindset or leveraging the Scrum or whatever it is? What would you say? Uh, well, I can say that in private organizations, uh, one of the biggest challenges that we are facing still today is the resistance to change because it's not, it's, we know it's not something easy. Uh, always change makes us fear, to feel fear, but um, I also find that uh, anyway organizations are are sure that agility can help them and so they are continue like walking in this uh, journey to have better places uh, in where they can offer more value to 
to their clients. Also, another challenge that we can find is uh, the regulations. Uh, sometimes uh, some companies, they have, a, you know, a very like um, big and very difficult procedures that they need to readapt and in order to make agility go like in a more easy way. And also related and something similar as Alexis uh, mentioned that the training, the development and how you can uh, help people to develop their skills, the, the, the trainings that they will need to have uh, in order to uh, do uh, a, a better agility, you know, not just to, to know the framework, it's also to have a better mindset in where they can grow all these new and, and rich ideas. And also in the government organizations, we also find extensive uh, documentation, uh, sometimes very rigid uh, structures that, that is sometimes difficult to, to access. And also some uh, topics related to legal penalties. So I, I will say that we are like facing a re uh, structuring things in all the organization because ag agility um, invites us to do that. If not, if we don't readapt and things and we, if we don't change our like uh, way of doing things, we are gonna, we are not gonna have uh, different results. We are gonna have the same results, you know? So that are some of the biggest challenges that we are facing nowadays in Peru uh, related to agility. And, and I would like to say that that is not peculiar to Chile or to Peru or to South America, especially the fact that even in the West, they're still trying to adopt the agile way. So I really give you guys credit. I give you credit. Anyway, like I've told everybody, I'm not in Nigeria right now. I am in South America. I am currently in Alexi's house, right? <laughs> so, okay, what would you like to say now? Alexandra has spoken. Yeah, uh, actually in, in South America, Latin America, the, the scenario is very similar. Uh, again, uh, how how was described uh, by Alexis and Alexandra, and in challenges or main common obstacles that the organization had to adopt agile are the resistance to change. Uh, that how uh, how said uh, Alexandra, we we have uh, uh, we have to understand by the way that the resistance is completely normal in any kind of change. So that is very expected in any transformation. Um, another aspect is that uh, the, there, there is not enough involvement from the leaders or active involvement is not enough. We have, for example, a sponsor who participate in the launch of the project and in the uh, go live when it finished and during all the project he, he doesn't exist that that is uh, it, it, it doesn't help in any way so uh, in any case so it, it is another weakness about the adoption and another thing is the lack of training and uh, education on agile specifically so if you if you see and here i will make the connection with i told you when i when i told about my journey in agile uh, and human resources uh, in theory and in the practical uh, the area who should be leading any kind of transformation including agile is human resources or people management however the same studies or researches in the world and in Latin America shows that uh, human resources is the participation of that kind of area is too low yet. For example, uh, in the first state of HRII that uh, was conducted this year around the world, 
they they show that uh, uh, just uh, 30 or 40 percent of uh, human resources areas in the world use some kind of methodology or model or framework of agile uh, in some specific uh, cases but uh, supposedly well uh, in agile people for example they created two years ago a specific agile people manifesto uh, which involves all the processes from human resources. So we have material, we have experiences, we have failures and successes related with that, but uh, we have, at least in Latin America, still a lot of to do uh, in those terms. So there, I, 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 I think that we have an opportunity to grow a lot, uh, to help organization, to adopt uh, the giant mindset before the tools probably in kinds of leadership, culture and, and other things. Awesome. Thank you, Ohe. Uh, I, I, I mean, the fact that I'm hearing you speak, I'm hearing in terms of you have experience, you have those that are passionate to make the changes, you have those that can help to rewrite the story of South. Uh, I know for a fact that if Africa, for instance, should adopt Agile, you know that corruption will not be evident because that's transparency. So I think one of the main impediment to adoption of Agile mindset is purely on the premise of the fact that yeah. people just are resistant to change. So. Can I ask you, Alexandra, um, what is the future for Agile in Peru? Um, well, the future of Agile in Peru, I can say that we have a, a lot to discover. Still, we, we will be like discovering a lot. Like, for example, uh, more and more I hear and I know about uh, some companies that are scaling a Scrum. You know that they are like uh, not just having one team that it is using Scrum. That they are like having more and more Scrum in their organization. So uh, I can say that that is one of the the, 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 the scenarios. And also uh, a new organization uh, um, structure because we will need to like build something completely new uh, with our experience we have in each organization, but with a different mindset, because this is not just about a new way of, of procedure or to do things like from the operational point of view. It's um, a way uh, to do things with people, with a new, a new cultural, um, point of view with openness, especially with courage, with uh, transparency, and we will need to build that in the future, for sure. Thank you so much. And what about you, um, Alexei, before I come to Jorge? Okay, thanks. Uh, well, uh, what is coming to Chile? Uh, this is according to my opinion. Uh, well, <laughs> in, improve, improve the agile scaling. Yeah. If it's true that each company adopts philosophies and frameworks like agile, like lean management, human-centered design, etc., but when you don't have the strong mindset foundations in the enterprise, the scaling will be distorted. The open discussion is given between agility for teams versus enterprise agility, self-organization versus alignment, budget by silos versus lean budgets, etc., etc. Uh, and finally, in Chile, we like to copy the buzzwords instead of focusing on the evolution of the practice. Thus, it is common to see scaling with tribes and squads models, but without developing the maximum potential yet. 
we have uh, strong, we have knowledge, we have practice training, but we need to improve the agile scaling for the next years. The invitation is to synchronize and evolve the silos, not destroy them. Thank you so much, Alexei. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And um, over to you, Uhe. Yeah. Uh, uh, to mention something different, I, I think that uh, in Latin America, uh, first we have a very, very big challenge, which is related with our culture, with our, exactly. with our kind of leadership. We still have a uh, one part, one important part of our trait as Latins is that we are very hierarchical yet. So that is uh, <laughs> just the opposite to be agile. So we have to work a lot to distribute the power to has uh, less hierarchical structures uh, to try to to be agile and not just do agile agility. Uh, so I think that is a very good uh, or very important challenge. What, another is related with, with the first is that we have to restructure and definish and de definite uh, or create new positions related with this kind of uh, people with uh, T profiles uh, and, and, and other aspects to to incorporate. Uh, uh, collaborators in the organizations uh, and um, I think that also is important to consider like we said uh, more to the leaders involve more to the leaders but not just the top management also the middle management that sometimes I think that we forget um, if you see the day by day in the world the people who really uh, is working and is talking daily with the teams are the middle management. So if we don't support them, we don't give them the skills, if we don't help them to uh, incorporate a new mindset uh, of Agile, it will be much harder that we can adopt that kind of uh, mindset and, and way of work in the, in the organizations. Thank you so much, OA. Now we have done a lot of serious questions. I want to get people excited. So teach me some Spanish. Ah, okay. Yes. <laughs> teach me Spanish. <laughs> we, we, I think that we could use uh, typical terms from Peru and from Chile. <laughs> yes, tip, yes. To so you <laughs> okay, so Alexandra, what is the word you want to teach me in Spanish? Typical language for Peru that Peruans speak. Well, I, I will say that you for sure need to learn how to say ceviche, which is our ceviche. typical dish ceviche. here in Peru. Ceviche. ceviche. Yes. Ooh, no. Quiero un ceviche. Quiero un ceviche. Yes. Good. Thank you. <laughs> With that, you will be like alive in Peru. <laughs> and you Quiero will have a ceviche. Really good food. Yes. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> now, over to the Chilean ambassador. When you go to Peru, definitely you have to order a ceviche. It's a delicious I have food. to. Food Are have you going to invite me, Alexandra, to Peru? <laughs> you are very welcome to come any anytime. <laughs> grazie. <laughs> it's, it's grazie, right? Grazie, grazie. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I want a chilly word. Perfect. I, I will be with one. Um, in Chile, uh, instead of saying already, we say Japo. <laughs> Japo. Japo. Instead of saying already, we okay. say Japo. Japo. Alexei. Japo. Japo. Yeah. Um, Alexandra. Japo. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, but there's a question for us. I think you said, how is the reality of Agile in North America? The companies are implementing this methodology in big scale. 
And that's from Pablo Cruz. That's a question. And who wants to go? He was the radio of a in North America. The companies are implementing this method in a big scale. In North America, uh, Pablo, thanks for the question. Actually, um, it's not very different uh, what, in relation what we, what we mentioned right now, because the, the research we said uh, by the chat is actually in Latin America, it includes uh, Mexico as well, which is part of North America. I don't have the specific information about um, US or Canada, but I have talked with some of the other ambassadors from North America and the US, and I think that is, at least the challenges are very similar. Is they are related with the leadership, with adopt the real mindset of agile, and not just the tools or the more fun, the funniest things <laughs> uh, with the positive campaigns and murals, and uh, so that it. The, the big challenge is that uh, people and uh, leaders think uh, in a agility way and make the decisions, consider, for example, the values and principles uh, which are described in Naja. Awesome. And he asked a question. I think that's a very important question, to be honest. He said, what are the common framework or methodologies that are used in in Chile, in Peru, in uh, South America, for instance? Well, here okay. in, per in Peru, um, the framework that we use more is Scrum, for sure. And then it, it is followed by Kanban. And I can say that are the two biggest ones, uh, frameworks that we use here in Peru. I, I think that's the two biggest in the world, as far yes. as I'm concerned. I've not heard <laughs> yeah. of it. I've heard of the training of ex extreme programming, but I know that the two main popular framework is Scrum and is Kanban. Yeah. And Chile, um, Alexi, do you have anything to add to that? Perfect, thank you, Mercy. In Chile, it's similar. Uh, for example, uh, extreme programming is a very good framework, but the, the scope, um, it's uh, mean only in IT areas. Um, and Scrum and Kanban, um, like Piru, uh, it's the more frequently frameworks used uh, there in, in Chile. And the hybrids too, yeah? the, the company uh, likes to adapt um, with a lot of talent these frameworks. For, uh, for example, takes Scrum, takes the best of design thinking, takes the best of Lean, take the best of Lean Startup, for example, and create their own frameworks to adapt and inspect uh, in, in a few years. But in in fact, uh, Scrum and Kanban and the favorites. Yeah, Thank Latin, you. Latin America is the same, in the Scrum, Kanban, and Scrumban, which is a mix between they both. I've heard of that, yes. I've heard yeah. of it, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, I agree with Alexis. Actually, there are some uh, former uh, frameworks, not from agility, but uh, Management 3.0 and Lean Change Management. They use a methodology called Mojito, which Mojito. is a three. Yeah. I love it. I know Mojito. <laughs> and what they do is incorporate different disciplines, approaches, uh, frameworks, and they mix it. And created, oh, people, right? yeah, yeah, and, and, and they created a management for all a lean change management. So, for example, in the case of lean change management, uh, we include uh, agile, lean startup, lean design thinking, change management, etc. So, I think that uh, it uh, is not just uh, a trend on in the organizations, uh, but it's a trend. Uh, uh, in some cases, with formal uh, new approaches. Yeah. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming. Don't disconnect. We'll do a, a, a little bit of retro, ask how we have gone. I mean, we are agilists, aren't we? And um, thank you, Pablo, for joining.
Uh, we appreciate everyone that has joined this interview. And I've gone to learn a lot because the world is a small village. What is going on in Chile, what is going on in uh, Peru is not different from what is going on in Nigeria. If our leaders can adopt the agile mindset to doing what they need to do, corruption will be dead. Yeah. Because it's going to force transparency, it's going to force accountability, it's going to force them to work. Because with Agile, there is nowhere to hide. You have to do what you say you will do. And I love Scrum because it gives that feedback loop where you can test, you can iterate, you can adapt. So I sincerely appreciate you guys coming today. This has been a blast. I appreciate your time. Amazing session. I don't know if you have anything else to add before we call it a day. You have anything else to add to it? Go ahead. Um, I think that uh, I will add just two words that I think that are important in, the, in terms of the mindset and organizations. One is that you or we have, uh, uh, we as team and people around the world which is working with AI, we have to reinforce the uh, psychology safety uh, into, mm. into the yeah. organization to people can do different things, can experiment, can get failures and learnings from the experiments, etc. Cetera, et cetera. I think that is a real key factor to incorporate in the organizations. And another word or term that actually I stole from another author in Nigerian people is that we have to be ecocentric, no egocentric. And I think that is also very important. Uh, to pay attention to our environments, to our st stakeholders, collaborators, and the, the way how we do the things uh, are important. So it, 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 it matters if we are affecting people with our change. So uh, we have to be ecocentric. Just that, and obviously, thanks again for, for the invitation. It was a great session to me and for the team. Thank you. You said ecocentric, not egocentric, right? Right. Ecocentric. Let me put that down. And I would like to speak about the festival. What are the programs that you have planned out um, for the festival? So I'll put your word. And Alex, Sandra, I'd like you to say, actually, I would like you to give me five words that describe the festival all of you give me five words i want to type it out so um alexandra you i mean uh oh hey type it in spanish okay <laughs> so that spanish people can actually read as well so five words that describe the festival to you alexandra give it to me i'm typing global friends oh yes i love that global friends yes Mm -hmm. Five. Alexandra, there are, five? Four, there five. Are two. Yeah. There are two. We all want friends. <laughs> 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 yes, what else? Collaboration. Collaboration. True. Yeah. Collaboration. Yes. Learning. Mm -hmm. Learning. Yes. Learning. Um, One. Openness. Openness. I love it. Yes. And um, discovery. Discovery. Oh, I love it. I love, love, love it. Discovery. And that is from Alexandra. Let me put your name so everybody can know that it's coming from you. Awesome. So who is going to go next? And this is... I will go. Uh, five words. Uh, yeah. Big friends. Big friends. Uh, uh, inclusion. Okay. Happiness. Hold on. So, what's the first one? Friendliness. Uh, the, 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 the first, uh, big friends. Big friends. Whoa. Yes. The second, inclusion. Inclusion. True. I'm sure Scott will be so happy about this inclusion. Yes. 
uh, the, the third, uh, new grass roots. New? New grass roots. Okay, new grass roots, awesome. Yes. Perfect. Uh, happiness. Happiness. And multifaceted. Multifaceted. Uh, or, di or diverse. Hold on. <laughs> multifaceted, okay. I hope my first attempt is correct. Mul oh, multi. Anyway, they'll forgive me. I've, I have, uh, thank God for internet, for the computer. So I've got that. And from Alexi, I'm going to display very shortly. Okay, so that is Big Friends. Let me share that again. Big Friends, Inclusion, New Grassroots, Happiness, Multifaceted. Thank you so much. And from Alexandra, Alexandra says, Global Friends, like I've met you now, uh, Collaboration, Learning, Openness, Discovery. And that's from Alexandra. Thank you so much. Let me get it in Spanish and let's go. Mojito cherry picking. <laughs> okay, let me paste it here. Okay, now let's go. Oh, hey, over to you. Uh, I would say, in uh, uh, small friends, no, I'm <laughs> uh, Opportunity. It's a big opportunity. So, what was the first one? Opportunity. Opportunity, indeed. I've got the opportunity of meeting you guys. Opportunities, yeah. Learning. Learning, awesome. Sure. Sharing. Sharing, yes, sharing. Okay, sharing, yes. I think that also is a big challenge. Big challenge, it is a yeah. big challenge, I know. Big yeah. challenge to come up with almost 10,000 people across the world to have a festival yeah. for one month. It is a challenge, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's and it. I one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the program important is for free. That, 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 that's, that's why it's a great opportunity. One full month uh, where people from anywhere can join different activities uh, for free uh, with different experiences, realities, contexts. So it's amazing. Yes, it is amazing. Thank you so much, Ohe. Thank you. And this is from Ohe. Let me just put that there. Um, and I can't wait to come to South America. I can't wait to come to Peru. That's what the festival has done for all of us. That's what he has done. It has connected, indeed, the Agile 20 Reflect with the brainchild of Scott. And it's shown that the world is indeed a global village. I've connected with people from India, from, from Asia, from South America, from the UK, from Europe. That is the power of digital yeah transformation and just bringing everybody together so thank you i have the honor of meeting with you let me just end the broadcast